Felt hats. Okay, so the price of fur is going to go up, which is going to be great once we start colonizing stuff, because we're going to have lots of fur. We're already producing some fur out of, uh, you know, up here. We're losing money again, very slightly, so I'm going to tweak this down to minus 249. There we go. So we're still making money. Okay, we do have a neighbor who's ahead of us in Diplotech now, so we are going to have to tack. And we'll get the colonists first. Nobles demand increased pensions. Um, national tax modifier minus 10 for 20 years. Or we can lose a stability. Kings had to keep their unruly nobles in line through many methods. One of the most common was cold, hard cash. Nobles will demand increased pensions. Well, it might end up balancing out. Because um, we're going to lose taxes, but also the nobles won't be disloyal anymore, so we won't be paying as much for army maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> barely, barely tipped us back into the red. Uh, it'll be good when we go to war, though. Native Assimilation in Eric's Fjord. That's very good. Peralta Goldmine. The bloody massacre in Espa Chomi left few Peralta family members alive when the natives attacked their routine gold expedition. The ones who survived begged for the help of our conquistador and the soldiers of our expedition promising much gold if their families avenged. Uh, sure, whatever they need as long as we get that gold. The bodies of the fallen Peralta family members have been savaged, which made it difficult to identify them. Burying them took precious time, and the scouts sent out to search the surrounding areas for the attackers returned with nothing. The oldest son of the Peralta is one of the few survivors who refused to give up. Uh, he led the expedition toward the Peralta gold mine in case the attackers had found their way there. As they approached the mine, their fears were confirmed. The mine is no more. The attackers buried it in rubble and the gold is lost. The Peralta family was avenged as a large group of attackers were taken by surprise and easily killed. That's something at least. So we got some prestige, but no gold. Native assimilation in the other part of Greenland. So our trading... Our, uh, our tendency toward trade instead of mere brutality is kind of paying off. Oh, this was depleted by migrants. Mungo Bruce has died. And England has the gall to claim Ulster. So we need... Oh, we're capped out on military power. Well, you know what? Um, we might as well tech early, because it'll help with our innovativeness. Protestant Reformation in Brandenburg! Alright, um... So here's the thing. Um, I think we are going to go Protestant. Like, I'm tempted, since this is for YouTube, to wait until Anglicanism becomes available. Because I'm pretty sure we can become Anglican. Um... But this one will help us colonize better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we should go Protestant. We're going to be fighting rebellions for ages, but... Uh, you know what? We will deal with it. So we'll start by converting Lothian... Perth has become a center of reformation. Oh, hey, look. Uh, Castilian peasants are causing a lot of trouble, it looks like. Disputed succession. Don't really care. Don't really care about that. Oh, we can get superior unit types. The Schwarze Reiter. And the Culverin. Let's see, we want the one with the most offensive fire. 
Yeah, we'll do the, you know, we'll go with the culverin. About to meet with the Iroquois for the first time. England sharing their maps of Canada with Castile. Aberdeen has converted to Protestant from the center of faith. What is our current tolerance of heretics? It's not super high. Religious Unity 12. And we have the unbalanced research penalty. That's not good. It's part of why we're losing so much money. Oh, because we got so far ahead in mill tech. That's why. Should have spent it on development. I wasn't paying attention. We won't make that mistake again this playthrough. I can't say we will not make that mistake again ever, but I can say we will not make that mistake again this playthrough. Did we actually lose a battle against natives? England's building a spy network. I don't care. The natives of Wabash have not been exactly friendly to our expedition. The ones we met tried to steal our weapons during the night. During the struggle, two natives were killed. Our crew managed to flee over 100 miles in a day before they dared camp again. There are signs that the natives are after them once more, and they might find the strength to repeat the marathon if encouraged. Let's see, we can purchase another ability that's not going to be relevant for very long. Uh, sure. Go with that one. Inverness is converted to Protestant. Church of Scotland. Drunken whiskey thieves found singing loudly lecherous songs and swigging whiskey straight from the bottle. Sounds very Scottish. The two men were clearly guilty of their crime. To steal whiskey and drink it while on duty? How unprofessional. They were tried in martial court and sentenced to flogging, then released. Um, so I can just pick which one I want. I will take the Diplo power, which will then give me another colonist which will then allow me to colonize this place not yet um, okay well where does our colonial range end I guess kind of over here four five four. There we go. Alright, where were those other... I guess I need to split off even further from this army. Okay, and then these boats, we're going to unmothball them. Going to wait a month for them to get some health. These guys are going to go to our new colony. New trade research is heretical. Um, we can't allow anyone to stand in the way of progress. Conversion successful. Awesome. Kildare is next. Well, let's see. What's the Center of Reformation working on? Working on Cork. Okay, yeah, so we'll go after Kildare. Most deadly lake. Let's go around it. These lakes, you know, they mean business. Bleeding gums and falling teeth, with a diet consisting mostly of cured and salted meat and dried grains, the malaise and lethargy 
Should have been first symptoms recognized as scurvy, but it was not until gums started bleeding and teeth started falling out that we realized we had to do something to save our expedition members. As they're exploring provinces that have an unknown flora and fauna to us, it would be unwise to eat anything as it could be poisonous. Maybe we should try to establish contact with the natives of Chickasaw and ask for their help. Uh, yeah, we'll buy some medicine from the Chickasaw, why not? All right. So we'll commit to colonizing Newfoundland. Areas, yeah. The actual area of Nova Scotia is like down here, right? The area that's called uh, Lower Acadia or whatever. Oh shoot, but now this is going to be the capital of Canada. Uh, Alright, so... Conversions are taking place. We have nine charge power. Converted the heretics of Kildare. What? Where is the... Uh, Ormon, so we'll work on converting Sutherland. Oh, it doesn't even let us select the one that's being converted by the Center of Reformation. So we don't even need to worry about it. Protestantism entrenched. Will the price of fish do anything to our economy? Maybe. Yeah, we're probably going to go into debt to colonize the North America. Which is fine, that's historically accurate. In the name of nice borders, I am going to insist on colonizing this entire island before we go grab Stadacona. Rise of a Pretender, okay. So, Charles I Stuart is now the king. He is, uh, oh, that's not my country. Uh, he is 57 with no legal heir. So the disputed succession of Charles has caused a pretender to raise an army and march for the capital. I don't actually remember why he is uh, disputed, but we'll go ahead and raise our maintenance. See what we're dealing with. Archibald Hume. The uh, Hume family would go on to uh, be important for completely other reasons in the real timeline. David Hume was a, uh, an important thinker of this era. Alright, we have low morale, but we have great numbers advantage, and we have a much better general. And we lost. <laughs> well, we did our best. The Royal Army was not exactly, as they say, ready to rock for that battle. We were trying to get there fast enough... Let's see, the ascension of Charles has been very well received by the Scottish people in our kingdom, but the Highlanders view their new king with some distrust. To them, he is in many ways a man of strange customs and foreign mannerisms. Uh, so we really need to convert the capital so that we stop producing kings of a foreign culture. What is, does it say what uh, culture Archibald Hume is? If he's a Highlander, that would be kind of nice to have a Highlander king. Alright, we are going to convert the West March. We're up to 50% religious unity, so we're getting, getting back on our feet, unity-wise. Ormond is converted to Protestant. 
Very good. Growth of the administration. As the state and its bureaucracy grow, there's an ever-growing need of people to oversee and administrate various lands and functions. The nobility have traditionally been more associated, associated with military services to the state, but have increasingly made it clear that they still expect to be first in line when government offices are being handed out. The burghers, on the other hand, claim the nobility considers such appointments as mere rewards and will use them only to enrich themselves. Instead, the burghers argue we should appoint men... Um, out of individual merit. One sec here. OBS is acting weird. Okay, I think we're good. The unexpected death of a trusted secretary has left a vacant position to be filled at the center of this conflict, with the burghers supporting one candidate and the nobility expecting us to pick another. While both candidates are talented men, this has to be a political decision. Um, so the nobles can gain some influence. Um, global trade power, diplomatic relations. I'm going to side with the burgers. Because the nobility, they're just never happy. For whatever reason. All right, we're going to wait one more month to regain some organization because it doesn't look like these guys are going to get anywhere before then. And we put down the pretenders. Well, almost. They're fleeing, they're fleeing. And there we go. They <laughs> took control of another province because we decided not to chase them. All right. Rebellion is over. The Stuarts remain on the throne of Scotland. For at least a while longer. And we're going to go to minus 2.5. Just to staunch the bleeding. Uh, don't care about naive relatives. They can do what they want. Alright, how are our colonies doing? England has decided to accept knowledge sharing for Portugal. Conversion is continuing apace. Ulster's next. Looks like our center of reformation might be acting on some foreign areas, is it? Maybe, maybe not. But as our religious unity goes up, our balance sheet should get considerably better. Um, Outer Hebrides is... Alright, so Greenland is ours. We can finish colonizing Newfoundland. Newfoundland, I suppose, is... The Canucks would insist it is pronounced. Or at least that's how all of my Canadian friends say it, so. Uh, yeah, we don't want to take any more admin ideas until we balance our tech out. We're still gaining innovativeness, that's good. Hey, Bohemia is the emperor now. Good luck ever getting any reforms passed. Conversion successful. The heretics of Ulster. Convert Limerick. Age of Discovery is ending soon. Colonial Adventures. Yes, we will definitely invest in the naval force. Austria is paying off the foreign debts of Savoy. England keeps fabricating claims on us, but never going to war because they don't actually have the stomach for it. Inner Hebrides has been converted to Protestant. Almost all of, like, Scotland proper has been converted at this point.
How are you guys doing? Still malcontents? Still can't call a diet. Uh, Hicksunt Dracones. The paint on the great rock that dominates the river is almost faded, but the six-legged monster it displays is still visible. Our natives tell us a fanciful tale of a dragon-like monster slain by their ancestors, but some of them confusedly insist the painting be a warning that we should head no further. What is certain is that all of our native guides insist on discharging their weapons at the painted figure as we pass us by. Uh, let's support their war on the beast, I think. We could use some admin power. Conversion successful. Go ahead and convert Silgo. Conversion of Ireland to Protestantism going far, far smoother than uh, attempts at doing so historically did. Possibly because we have, you know, Celtic unity on our side. And there we go. That should drastically improve our economy. We can also pass the Act of uh, Uniformity. We're not going to because I'd rather have lower institution embracement costs. We will purge those cowards. We have it to uh, spare. 1512, France and Scotland renewed their olive alliance as a counterbalance to England's involvement in anti-French schemes of Pope Julius II. This later drew the Scottish into a disastrous war against the English. Well, that's okay. I don't think it would be disastrous at this point. Target neighbors. Do we have everybody on target neighbors? Yeah, that's fine. We'll just keep them there. Connacht has converted to Protestant. So we're, we're getting pretty close to achieving religious unity. How it will do, how how uh, it will fare in the rest of the world remains to be seen. Are we still like spending a ton of money fighting corruption? What's going on here? Uh, religious unity is causing us to spend money. Colonial maintenance is costing us a lot of money. And I think the nobles being unhappy is also costing us a lot of money. And also missionary maintenance is going to contribute. Witch trials in West March. The transition from being part of the wider Roman Catholic Church to the local church of Scotland has generally worked well, but in some areas it's become unclear where authority lies. When there was suspicion of witchcraft in the old days, the Catholic Church would often become involved and might temper the outrage of the local population. The Reformation, on the other hand, has done much to strengthen the belief in popular versions of Christianity. A number of women stand accused of witchcraft in West March, and a search has already begun to find more. Local priests and magistrates have gotten involved in the trials, but so far the state has not yet been involved. As the number of women awaiting trial grows larger and larger, it may be necessary for us to act. Um, so we can condone the trials, give us church power... Uh, local unrest in the West March. We can ignore them, um, which causes the unrest to last only for three years instead of five. Um, or we can stop the trials. We lose 25 church power. 20% um, <laughs> chance of state seen to protect witches. 80% chance of stopped witch trials gives us five years of a smaller amount of unrest. Uh, we need that church power. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to go Malleus Maleficarum here. We have to go after those witches. Once again, we're just we're trying to beat the English. All right. Explored quite a bit of the North American continent so far. England still has their one dinky little colony, so we're we're ahead of them, which is good. Uh, okay, so we can we can afford to buy. 
some more ideas, but we shouldn't at this point. Unless it's going to give us innovativeness, which it doesn't look like it will. Pretty soon we'll complete the Nova Scotia focus. Finally managed to convert Tyrone to the true faith. England's now considered a great power again. Uh, we can continue to convert pro provinces to Protestant, which will hopefully fix our economy. A priest in Ayr has translated air, I suppose. It's translated the Bible into our language and has started to distribute copies to nearby villages throughout Ayrshire. Great news! Let's spread them far and wide. Ottomans no longer consider England as a rival. By the way, is our exploration fleet doing anything? No. They need a new explorer. Arthur Montgomery. Explorer extraordinaire. He's really good at guns. Um, and he should have some... Yep, yeah, not yet. He should soon have some additional uh, range to explore. Once we start establishing more ports. Austria is no longer a great power. Are we just totally neutral right now? Currently changes by 0.05 per month. Okay. So we are gaining a very, very, very small amount of uh, innovativeness. Donegal is converted to Protestant. Native assimilation. Converted Leinster to the true faith. Producing fish, which is not that great because Protestantism has destroyed the price of fish. Uh, nobility gains loyalty. Eight pe peasants rise up in Leinster. Yeah, let's deny the... So pe peasants typically had no voice, but they could occasionally gain access to the monarch and ask for address. Sometimes these requests for address would be directed at the local lord who was perceived to be violating the peasants' rights. Stepping in to override a noble's local authority was a very drastic step. Um, yeah, we can't afford to have the nobles be disloyal forever, so we're going to go fight these peasants with our totally underprepared army and hope for the best. Nope. Nope. 